My name is David Benheim, and I love Excel and Power BI and PowerPoint and Google Sheets and Zoom and Teams and also Sway, which is what we're going to show you later on. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and I do lots of blog posts about that. And myself, yeah, Ruth Pozuelo. I, I also love Power BI and Excel and uh, do mostly Power BI stuff. And then sometimes some flow, sometimes some power, what is it called? Power apps, but mainly Power BI. Mm, yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, mm -hmm. we thought we'd do this kind of joint uh, video to th go through one of my favorite applications for presenting data and a, a mixture of dashboards and analytics that both Ruth and I have done. We've worked on this, what, for two months now, I think? <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, do on and off, right? Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, hasn't yeah. taken us two months. Two months in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We took some breaks, but uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been fun. So, welcome to Sway. This is a Sway file, which is a page, and uh, it's effectively just a web page. And we're going to use it now in the context of COVID data to show you insights. Where each each new page that we scroll through is going to be an insight that we've discovered about COVID and also an interactive dashboard that's associated with it. So let's go. So I'm gonna navigate page by page here. This is some analysis that I put together um, where here I've got some text and I'll just walk you through what this is. So this is a, a dashboard that I've made on Power BI, but right now it's just images because I want to show you the insight. And what's really interesting is if you look at the 50 places that are performing the worst, which are these ones, you can see where they appear on the map. So we're talking like essentially Europe, most of the countries in Europe, the Americas as well. And look at Asia and Africa have absolutely nothing in them in Australia. Whereas if I scroll across, you can actually see the opposite effect. So the 50 countries that are performing the, the best, um, Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia is down here. So this is my region you can see that it's all of these countries here. And I find this fascinating because they are kind of countries in the tropical region. Tropic of Cancer starts around Taiwan. So you can see the straight line sort of here. There are very few countries north of that. And most of them are south of that. And you can see even Northern and Southern Africa are not included in this take. Whereas if I scroll the other side, I see all of these. And a lot of the Northern and Southern Africa countries are kind of in the middle part um, between the top and the, the bottom 50. But let's look at that as an interactive dashboard here. As we were saying before, you can write your insights in here. I love with Sway how you can just emphasize certain texts like this and change the color, but keep it to a very consistent theme. And it's actually quite easy to do. So here I've got highest to lowest, or I can go lowest to highest, and I can filter to say the top 34 countries like that. And I can scroll it here. I can also use these kind of filters there, or I can click on other metrics. So if I wanna see the absolute number of cases, not per million, I can click on that. I can click on the total deaths, the total tests. And all of these metrics will show you the countries by case bands. And here they are in a table. Uh, you can also hover to see these report page tooltips <laughs> that Ruth and I have talked a lot about on our channels. And the other thing I love is this kind of chart where you can have an image as the axis, kind of like a, an image or a flag chart like this. this it was is... quite interesting though, these uh, North hemisphere and South hemisphere. Uh, yes. Why would you say that the Southern hemisphere has less cases? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say it's about the hemisphere. It, it seems to be about kind of the middle of the world, because if we see the, if we see even the countries in South America, the, the southernmost countries and the southernmost ones in Africa as well are also excluded. Mm -hmm. It tends to be the ones that are in the tropical region. The tropical mm -hmm. region is between the Tropic of Cancer, which is around Taiwan and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is, around here and most of the countries are in between now there has been some analysis done 
about this and it could be to mm -hmm. do with the temperatures the high temperatures or the humidity levels which tend to be higher in the tropical regions or alternatively it's a byproduct of that so when it's hotter people are, spend more time outside where transmission mm -hmm. rates are lower and they get more vitamin d but it's clear yeah, from the findings when you say ruth yeah, yeah yeah so remember those image charts where you've got image as the axes and then the charts coming out of them so i have a how-to video showing you exactly how to do that uh, and you can play the video directly from within sway which is quite nice that's something you can mm -hmm. do you can just press play like that so another um another analytics which i like using more and more actually is these kind of smart narratives so mm -hmm. What I did was I managed to create this that gives you a smart narrative with the total case numbers to date and the total number of deaths and by population. So this is for mm -hmm. all over the world. And then it has what the country is with the most deaths and the country with the most deaths in the seven day moving average and the highest death rate. But it does actually apply with filters. So this is a, a custom visual called uh, the smart filter. So I could say, for example, I only want to look at um, America, America's like that. And then it will give me all these numbers filtered for America's. Now Mexico has changed to be that one. Or I can say uh, Europe, I've uh, got subregions as well. I can have multiple regions if I want to add them, for example, Europe and Asia. And I can add both of those. And I can see India is the country with the most deaths and seven day moving average india is unfortunately going through a terrible yeah. um third yeah. wave right now and then mm -hmm. here is another example of that image chart i think it looks really neat actually yeah. <laughs> this kind of image flag chart like this i write summaries about covid in in my country cambodia quite often and i publish that on social media about what's happening today mm -hmm. and i also publish it with one of the daily um news outlets here so oh. I do give them visuals, but I think that they also sometimes want to see the text of how many cases today, how many deaths today um, in a sentence. So um, I haven't used smart narratives as much as I have for this example. I thought I'd give it a try. And I yeah. think it's pretty it's pretty neat for this specific use case. So I quite yeah. like it. Yeah, for sure. And for company company summaries, you know, when you close the book and then you you're telling stories about how, how your company did, that is quite actually quite nice because the text is normally quite dry. You know, you just yeah. say, okay, we grew that much, it went up this much, and down this. So then you get it generated for you, so you're not to write it. So definitely, there are use cases for it. Um, and then here, if you if you want to know more about that, so I actually created a YouTube video about 14 AI tools in Power BI. So. Um, it has a lot of them. Smart narratives is the newest one, but also things like explain the increase or decrease, sentiment analysis, key phrase analysis, doing Q and A. So I have again this embedded video that goes with that theme that you can watch from directly within the Sway. So I published this about six months ago. So feel mm -hmm. free to check it out. <laughs> um, with Sway as well, you can nice. navigate this way through sections, and that takes us to oh, the next section. Yeah, yeah. If you click on this mm -hmm. one. <laughs> This is really? the next section, which is Ruth. So do you want to talk us through this one? Yes, vaccine tracker. So I created actually a vaccine tracker in the beginning of the year when, when the vaccinations started. And, you know, the data set is actually massive. There's so many things you can report on vaccine tracking. Like you can say what vaccines are being used, where they're being used, how many doses have been administered. First dose, second dose. I mean, there's like a thousand and a million stories to tell. So I just wanted to know for myself two things. <laughs> I wanted to know how it was going, the vaccination, the full vaccination. I didn't care about one dose vaccine because you're not immune. I mean, you're not immune either with two doses, but I mean, the full potential of the vaccines, so how many doses, the maximum doses that you need in order to be vaccinated. I wanted to know it by country and then I want to know, okay, this is a global problem. So we will be safe when the whole world has got their vaccines. It doesn't help that Europe is vaccine or the US is vaccine. Everybody has to be vaccinated because it's a global world. We travel everywhere. So I wanted to know how the world vaccination goes and how it goes per country, right? So that's it. I didn't want to know anything else. And that's why I created this very simple chart. 
that basically goes to GitHub is our World in Data GitHub page that actually produces the data daily. So it goes to there, to the GitHub, it publishes, it refreshes once a day, and then it publishes on Twitter this image. Automatically, I don't do anything together with Flow. So you get the image and then you can follow this vaccine tracker too. And then I go on Twitter every day and I just, just check. And I think it's quite neat to go through the Twitter feed and go up and down yeah. and you see, oh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So it, it gives hope. It gives me hope. Like, oh, okay, we're moving slow. I would, I would have guessed that by now, I mean, we're almost May, that would have gone further than 2% of vaccinations in the world. Gibraltar is doing fabulous. Do you see? Yeah. So, so I'm, <laughs> I'm actually from Gibraltar. So this is a, this is my hometown. I grew up there. My parents are living there. So it's a tiny place next to Spain, a British colony, and that is <laughs> leading the world. And for the next one, the, there's been uh, quite a they call it vaccine in inequality or you know the, the different access to vaccines in the world has been so. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought that it would happen, but probably because I'm a bit naive, of course it would happen that people would try to vaccine their own country first. And you can see yeah. the difference in this chart, right? Is yeah, absolutely. Amazing. It, yeah. it is a bit sad to see, actually. I would rather see 65 plus people get vaccinated first all over the world and then everybody else. The younger we are, the safer we are. So. But it is not a fair world, so, so this is what it is. That's how it looks. <laughs> I, I did a three-part series on YouTube about how I created everything. So how I created the, how I got the data from GitHub, created the report, published it to the surveys, and also triggering the, the using flow to publish the um, the snapshots on Twitter. So the, the three videos are in there. In case somebody is interested to just reproduce what I've done, it, everything is laid out there. So you will be able to get exactly the same thing as I've done. Great. And the, the report is available for download too, if you just want to use it. Awesome. Yeah, and you can just play the video from directly there. Mm -hmm. uh, as I showed you here. This is the, yeah, the second one and the third one. Perfect. Yeah, I'm interested in the in the the Twitter thing, actually. <laughs> That might be useful for yeah. my daily reports as well. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Mm. You need a Power BI Premium producer license. Okay, um, okay. All right, and then uh, lastly is just a tutorial on how to make Sway. So in my opinion, PDFs are, they're just not for the 2020s. Where now that we don't go into the office as much, we don't print things as much anymore. So we're more likely to read things on a screen and PDFs are just horrible to read on a screen, let alone on a mobile device. So there's absolutely no point in having things page by page. So instead of, instead of turning Word documents into PDF, I nowadays turn most of them into Sway files with the exception of anything that is signed like a contract. Um, mm -hmm. I'm talking about proposals. I'm talking about reports or even like post-training hubs that I make for my students after courses. And so I, the one that we showed you is a slide-by-slide -slide one. But an, another way to do it, probably one that mm -hmm. I use more, is this kind of scrollable reading document like this. And mm -hmm. I have here exactly a tutorial of how to do it. Um, and even some sub sways that are embedded inside the top sway. Uh, oh. A little bit of inception there with some videos. And you can also embed other contents like PowerPoint slides or here I have an Excel file embedded inside a sway. And what's cool about this is that users can actually type things in here and that will affect these things. So, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like creating a model where a user can type in some stuff. It doesn't get saved, but you can have any kind of formula or dashboard that will enable you to check what's happening there. So yeah, these are parameters that you can use. So I really like this. This is a feature that, that could be used. Um, I have a video where I explain how to do this embedding and how to convert a word file into Sway. And actually it's so easy to make it look really, really good and really slick. So mm -hmm. something that Ruth and I have worked on, but 
once you get how to do it, it's very easy to do way faster yeah. than editing on PowerPoint. Now that Something that was it. amazing to me is how easy for you and I to collaborate. Mm, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. completely flawless, right? We're in different countries. I haven't used Sway that much. And it was really easy to just, and for us to just change things back and forth, to test things. You can change the color of the entire Sway in a click yeah. and test different formats, different, okay, should we have it as a page or should we have it as a flow? It's just click, click, click. I mean, it's yeah. very easy to do things and to work with others for a team, a marketing team, it must be a dream. You just go in and put your section and work on it. Yeah, and you don't need to know like advanced, you know, image manipulation stuff or mm -hmm. it, it, it chooses your color scheme or I, I got my color scheme to color match my logo XL Consulting. Mm -hmm. and so it just had black and white and the green color was my logo color. So those kind of things, it just looks really slick. Check Sway is really, really nice tool for telling stories, not just to present in a dashboard, but adding text to it and presenting the stories. And uh, check all the Sway's videos that David has. Mm, thanks. Yeah, so if you like this video, then you can check out Ruth's videos and my videos as well. Um, I make one video a week, roughly, and you make three a week. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good to see you, Ruth, from across the world. <laughs> yeah, just see you. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. <laughs>